Welcome back to Day to Day Chess. This is Sabina and I already got you used to my classical games and I'm continuing with that. I cannot believe how impressed I am every single day to find out more games that I wasn't familiar with maybe or that I was familiar with but I wasn't sure who has played them. And um, this game is going to be mind blowing, I promise you. Don't stop the video too early, make sure you go um, through it until the end or check out this game between Akiba Rubinstein and Richard Techman. It's definitely a game worth watching. This game was played in their match that they played in Vienna in 1908. That match was won finally by Akiba Rubinstein with three and a half to two and a half. Um, so what can I say? I mean Akiba is definitely a um, famous, um, really great uh, endgame chess player with a great technique and uh, Richard Techman is actually known for his uh, name Richard V and the reason is well he was finishing kind of fifth at a lot of the top tournaments so that's why he got that name but he was definitely a top uh, chess player in those times um, he originally from Germany so um, definitely two strong chess players, great opposition to each other. Let's check out the game and see. Um, let me know if, uh, if it blew your mind or not. <laughs> Let's check it out. So uh, we're seeing the Queen's Gambit here, just the classical line with knight d7, e3, bishop e7, knight f3. So far so good. We've seen this many times. I'm sure you've seen it as well. It's still played nowadays. Definitely a great foundation for chess. And here uh, we are going to see Rubinstein's attack. Yes, there is a Rubinstein's attack. Surprisingly or not, that is the name that this variation has gotten with Queen C2 in the Queen's, uh, Queen's Gambit. Other moves, of course, are possible, but um, this was one of the first time that um, um, this queen c2 move was played by Akiba and uh, let's check it out what's so special about it well basically white is developing the queen side first and might be planning on castling long too he doesn't have to but there is a, there is a big possibility that that's going to happen so that's why um, queen c2 so early in the game normally we're waiting on a little bit before developing our queen and here black went for b6 and maybe c5 was a better choice to just counterattack the center immediately. Nowadays, probably d c5 is the main choice for black. However, on those times, they were still very uh, much focused on the development of the pieces. So that's why b6 was played in this game. Of course, the idea is to play bishop b7. But aside from that, basically black commits that he's going to put the bishop in b7. Because with b6... Black weakens the c6 square, and um, unless you play c5 really early, c6 is going to be a big, big trouble in Black's position. So that is a little problem with the b6, and that is the reason why you will always see after b6, white captures in d5 almost instantaneously. Uh, the reason is that now, when Black captures back with the pawn, of course, because he wants to maintain the center, these pawns have been blocked in the center right so when that bishop is going to get developed in b7 like i said earlier is it's going to be uh, blocked by his own pawn so it won't do much but if you don't put the bishop uh in b7 you try to develop it on this diagonal then you're going to have tr some problems on the c6 square and d5 square might be weak as well normally those pawns go b7 c6 d5 that's how they stay that's the famous chain of pawns that we see in the queen's um, gambit for black so uh definitely uh, a little little issue with this um with this defense for black but of course it's just a little thing uh, we've, we're playing so many openings where there are little, little problems, um, but eventually black manages to equalize. Now, uh, Rubinstein doesn't castle immediately. He goes for bishop d3 first, putting some pressure in h7, and the bishop and the queen are really going to be um, very strong on the diagonal at some point, threatening to capture that knight, and black would lose the pawn. Not right now, because, of course, black would just simply capture back with uh, this d7 knight, and you won't be doing much. Now bishop b7, of course, finishing the development, making sure we're covering the c6 square, and now white goes for the castle. 
okay h7 is our goal but of course we can't do much about it for the moment and now black went for c5 of course very natural uh, i would play c5 in this position myself uh, knight e4 is another possibility here. The idea is to close the action of the bishop and queen from h7, but in the same time, we are trying to make this trade happen. You're going to see it very often in the queen's gambit. Because now, if we take in e7, simply queen takes, the knight is well protected there in e4, black has no issues. And if white doesn't take... Um, he could actually go for h4 in this position, so that he, I'm going to... In any um, um, case you're going to capture here, I will be able to capture with the H pawn and open up the file. Um, this is um, this is an interesting idea. And now, for example, if knight takes g5, knight takes g5, and um, black and taking g5, but then you lose this h7 pawn intermediate. So maybe we can just go g6 here with black, closing up the the diagonal and um, this position should be quite uh, quite all right this bishop can come be a nice protector there if h5 capture we take always with the f pawn um at some point not now of course the knight is hanging so that those are basically the main ideas in this position but instead of this queen uh sorry knight e4 for black uh techman went for c5 and it seems natural because we have opposite side castling and now it's very important who goes first to the attack and who manages to to uh, mate the opposite king. And here we see Akiba in action. H4. Black is going to play rook c8, trade in d4, open up the c file, some b5, b4 stuff. We have to play on the king side. That's the reason why we cast along. So he's getting ready for that h4. Now, in case of any knight moving away, you know, the pawn is going to be ready to capture. And here, his opponent made a big, big mistake, c4. Why is this move so bad for black? Well, you're simply getting rid of this tension here in the center. Black can open up that, that c file anytime he wants. He does not need to play c4. c4 is just a commitment move that kind of says, well, I don't care of opening the c file. I'm going to try to play a6, b5 before, you know, slowly push the pawns, chase your knight away, and then maybe c3 or b3 to open up the file. Not the best choice. It's kind of slow for black. That was That is the problem. Simply in this position, rook c8 had to be played. And if king b1, of course, getting out from the from the pin, no, rook e8. Just let's wait. Let's stay and wait a little bit. We also have this e4 square that we can put. try to to put our knight on, you know, let's see how white is going to open up the position. This is definitely quite, um, quite okay for black. But after c4, um, the position is kind of uh, not that great for black anymore. Bishop f5. Of course, we want to maintain the bishop on the diagonal, um, active for as much as possible. Don't want to go back to e2 and then e4 is going to be without protection. Black can just play knight e4 and goodbye. Uh, so bishop f5, and now rook e8 was played by Techman, with the idea knight f8, making sure that h7 pawn is going to be well protected, and uh, in case of any h file getting opened, I'll be I'll be totally safe, so I can afterwards continue with my attack. And here Rubinstein found a very nice idea. Bishop takes f6, so he's giving away the bishop for the knight in order to free the g5 square for his pawn so he can play g4 g5 with tempo black is forced to capture back with the knight and now we play g4 so definitely a good exchange right there normally we don't want to make that exchange but now that we want to open up the king side we are making it now bishop d6 of course we continue right we don't just play g4 and then just wait g5 trying to chase the knight away. Now, the only place for the knight is e4, because otherwise h7 is going to be lost. So now, h5. Of course, we continue our attack. We're going to have some g6 um, move at some point to open up um, some files here. Queen e7 was played. Instead of this queen e7, maybe king h8 was another possibility here by black. And for example, now if white would go for g6... We can take pawn takes and h6, kind of um, 
closing up, uh, kind of closing up the position here for for black. Maybe maybe it's not that great um, because white can take knight takes e4. So instead of that, okay, I'm sorry, I went on the wrong variation. G6, we first take in c3, pawn takes c3, and now we capture in g6, and now h6. So making sure, you know, we won't lose this e4, e4 pawn here, or c4 pawn after knight, knight takes. So yeah, so like this, this seems kind of a safe position for black, um, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. There will be eventually maybe some sacrifices in h6, but I think black can hold on in this position. Also, bishop a3 are in the air, is in the air, some b5, b4 as well. Bishop c8 to try to trade that bishop. So black should be should be all right. After queen e7, um, Rubinstein, like I told you that he was famous for end games, he knew that it's important to improve the position of your pieces, not only in end games but in attack as well. So he's improving the position by also bringing a piece into attack. Rook d to g1, getting ready for some g6 things there. And here his opponent messed up. He played a6. This after this white is just um, about to win the position. Probably g6 was the continuation um, that could have uh, happened here. And for example, if we take simply f takes g6, and now the queen is defending the h7 pawn. Your bishop is under attack in this position. For example, after takes pawn takes and you play knight d2, uh, maybe white will win one of these pawns, but most likely will not, uh, you know, have any mating attack. So sometimes it's better to remain active uh, and give away some material than just um, falling into some traps and, and getting mated. And that's exactly what happened to Techman after a6. Please pause the video and find the beautiful continuation that Rubinstein found here. You, you might have come across this position in some tactics books uh, or or online, but uh, if you haven't, just make sure you try to find it yourself. Bishop takes h7. Such a beautiful move here. Forcing the king to come to h7, and now we go for g6 with check. And now if f takes g6, we simply capture in e4, and now h knight g5 check, king h8, uh, sorry, h6 is possible for example but now after hg6 there's going to be a simple and beautiful mate here or win of material and for example if king g8 in that position simply queen takes c4 and the king cannot escape anymore there's gonna have to be queen e6 because king f8 is just falling into a simple mate here so um, f takes g6 definitely was not possible in this position. That is the reason why Techman went for king g8. Now, how do we continue? Well, we need to open up some, some more things. Knight takes e4, d takes e4, and here another beautiful move by Rubinstein. Pause the video and try to find it. h6. He doesn't hurry to, to take an f7 or anything. He's keeping that tension. You see, even in attack, he keeps that tension. He plays h6. So now when I'm going to open up the files, I'm going to open up both h and g files, not only one of them. What to do? Black is trying to keep the position closed with f6. And now, going through the towards the final moves of the game, h takes g7. Ooh. Some mates are coming around here. There's queen takes e4 as well. And here black went for queen e6. In case black would just capture the knight, uh, the knight in f3. Actually, sorry, uh, that's what he played. Pawn takes f3, of course. Queen e6 maybe uh, was, uh, was a possibility. But then there's just check. Rook h7, check. And now rook takes b7. This, this line is just uh, simply winning for white. So after... I'm sorry, a little mistake there. F takes e3. How do we finish this game? Simply rook h8 check. Rook h7 check. And he doesn't even take the queen. He doesn't care about the queen. Now it's all about the attack and the mate. A very beautiful queen f5. Bringing the last piece into the game. The most important piece, in fact. And after c3, now he took the queen. Because there's going to be, after... Rook takes just rook h1, and there 
this position is just winning. I hope you enjoyed his brilliant attack.